Hi, today's one of those glorious July mornings, afternoons. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, just wanted to share a recent experience that I had that really illustrates um, the connection that we have to others and boundaries and the discernment of when to get close and when to back away. So one of the things I frequently, uh, as a filter that I say to my clients is, well, whose bus are you on? Meaning it's important to have good boundaries, stay in our own business. Maybe our buses pull alongside somebody else's bus and, and we need to interact and, and help or, or, you know, connect with that person or avoid that, that person's bus. But it's a good reminder that, okay, I got to stay in my own bus to have good boundaries. Well, here's a recent experience I had that I wanted to share. Uh, many of you know that I am a runner and I compete in, in uh, different races, not, not competitively. I'm competitive, but that doesn't mean that I'm, you know, really competitive. But um, I enjoy it. And this weekend I had a different role. I volunteered in a local uh, Ironman muscle man and I got to do some of my favorite things which is be out on the water and be on my paddleboard and just be of assistance to other people. So the first leg of this triathlon is, was a 1.2 I think mile swim out in Seneca Lake and all of our jobs, kayakers, stand up paddleboarders, was to hold the line really there's a boundary between the, the buoys and where the swimmers were to go and also to provide assistance if somebody needed help. And it's pretty cool after the fact, you know, I've had a chance to process it more. In the beginning, all the really strong swimmers went and I'm just there on my paddleboard like, watching them all go by and thinking, gee, they're, they're never going to need any help at all, though I was mindful. Um, one or two people did come just to, to put their hand on my board, just, and I, you know, asked, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm just taking a break, wanted to get out of the, the you know, the big swath of uh, swimmers so they wouldn't get hit, punched by another swimmer, um, and then they'd go back into the flow. Well, when it got very interesting and our support was really needed was towards the end of the race and the, all the waves of the swimmers had gone by and then the, the slower swimmers who weren't as strong, uh, they were the last ones coming. And that's when our assistance as support volunteers really became necessary. And also the boundaries of too much versus just the right amount versus okay I'm gonna back way off so in the very beginning of the race the waters were calm and like a mirror it was just so beautiful so the the faster swimmers they had it really easy compared to the people that were later and as maybe half an hour went by 45 minutes the waves started picking up. And by the time the last group of swimmers were, were coming, they were probably halfway around the furthest buoys, there were white caps. And there was one particular swimmer, he was a big, strong looking guy, but he was really struggling. I could see he was going slowly. And now all the kayaks and paddleboarders that had been spread out over the course, we were all focusing in, giving guidance and support to these few swimmers that, that were left. And I was watching this one man and I went over to him with my board and I kept a good distance, kept my boundary. And then I could just see he was he was getting anxious, he was exhausted, and talk about the vagus nerve, I felt that he was in a sympathetic, he was approaching a sympathetic, like scared state, and noticing the boundary, I asked him without 
putting my board too close. Are you okay? And he asked me, how much farther? And I gave him my estimate and I, and I acknowledged there's some big waves, huh? And yeah, that's terrible. So I tried to navigate. I tried to get on the other side of the waves from him. And then they started pushing me closer to him. There I was violating his space. There I was not being helpful anymore. So I went back around the other side. And it's, you've probably heard the expression, holding the space for somebody. That can be an emotional space. And in this example, it was literal. I was literally holding the space between the swimmer and my board and I verbalized to him, I'm not leaving you. If you need to rest, grab my board, but I'm not leaving you. And he said, thank you, which I thought was huge in his struggling, just trying to swim and not swallow the lake. And I knew that that was an a important ventral vagal connection that helped him calm down. And he put his head down and he, he really started swimming harder for a while. Um, Sadly, I think uh, quite a few of the swimmers around this time frame they got they didn't make the cutoff, but boy, they were they were so strong and brave to be out there in the lake doing that. My my point in this is sometimes it's difficult to tell the boundaries, and the waves want to push us a little too close, and then we we make more of a, a mess. Then had we, we stepped back a little bit, and holding the space is not a static thing. Holding the space requires us to check in, to, to verbalize, do you need me to be here? Do you need space? What do you need from me right now? Sometimes we have to just listen to our intuition that says, yeah, this person needs me right here, right now, when they can't verbalize that for themselves. Um, the other example I wanted to share a few weeks prior, uh, my husband and I were in a, a Kai Tri, which is a 15 mile bike ride and a three mile paddle and then a 10K running race. And again, I had my paddle board and the launching spot here, we'd already rode 15 miles on our bikes. We were pretty tired, but to get in to the water, there was all this muck. So the water level, because we haven't had much rain, it dropped a foot. And a paddle board isn't like a kayak, which is flat on the bottom. There's a fin. So my fin was getting stuck in the muck. And if it hadn't been for my husband literally pulling me and pushing me, I never would have made it into the race. In fact, the race director was like, I don't think you can do it. And I said, oh, yes, I can. You watch me. And you'll see, There's. I'll put up a picture here. You'll see another person came on board, not literally on board, but right alongside. And he was doing his best to try to help me get out of the muck. The good news is with the help and, and my own struggling with my, my paddle into the muck, um, I got out into the channel and we were able to participate. But that's a whole different thing. Sometimes somebody is stuck, it feels like, whether it's literal, like what happened to me, or emotionally stuck, and they really need somebody to, to lend a hand, to give them a toe or a nudge or a push. And sometimes, like out on the lake yesterday, all the person needed was somebody to hold the space and know I got you if you need me. I hope uh, you're there for the people in your life, and I hope there's people there for you. And if there aren't, keep looking for those eggs in the basket. They're really all over the place.